everyone, welcome back to the Toll Tribe channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new here, I'm Laurient. And if you hear any bell ringing or baby grunting, that is Josiah. He's hanging out doing some playtime on his Love Every Play Gym. He loves this thing, guys. And he gets so jazzed up when I put him in here. He starts kicking the bell and he just recently learned how to roll over. So he loves to try and do that. And he gets very grunty when he rolls over. So if you hear any noises, that's him hanging out and playing. So I had something totally different planned for today's video. Um, it actually involved Mike and I really still like that video idea. So I'm going to push it out to a later date. So keep your eyes peeled for that. We're going to be reacting to um, like our old photos of us throughout the years. Thought that would be fun to kind of give you a glimpse into what our past look like. Um, but it was requested that I make a video about adoption profiles and how to put those together um, for hopeful adoptive parents. And I thought that was a really great video idea and I wanted to do it sooner rather than later because I do have so many people that have reached out to me as of late letting me know that they're starting the adoption process. Um, and so I wanted to kind of put this info out there for them or for anybody who's in the process and maybe wants to do a refresh on their adoption profile um, or for those of you guys who are just curious about the adoption process and like what that looks like do not have experience in foster care or um, private adoption of an older child um, or adopting from foster care or international adoption so my experience is solely with domestic infant adoption um, and so that's really kind of going to be more of the focus although Bless you. <laughs> Although there are probably a lot of things that I'm gonna touch upon in this video that probably ring true for all different kinds of adoption. I just don't wanna say like what because I don't know for sure. I had to pause. Somebody wanted to get up off his mat and cuddle. <gasps> right? You wanted to cuddle? Oh my gosh, you were just the sweetest. You're yeah, so sweet. Now that I'm back at work, guys, even though I'm working from home, I just feel like I don't get very many quality moments with him throughout the day because I'm always kind of just like caring for him and then rushing to get back to work and it just like really bums me out. So in the evenings, I just want to soak up as much of him as I can. I hope you don't mind that like the corner of his head is in the video, but I'm just gonna kind of cuddle him down here while I talk. So for starters, what is an adoption profile? Your adoption profile is going to be what is shown to expectant mothers or expectant parents when they come to an adoption professional to seek out hopeful adoptive parents. Um, your profile can come in a few different forms. So kind of like the old school way was to do a book. They're still very popular. Many people make books. A newer school way is to make a web page or a website. And now video is also becoming a very popular form of making an adoption profile. Now when it comes to profiles you can do all three you can do a book a web page and a video like nobody's probably gonna stop you from doing that but that does get expensive um, or you can kind of pick and choose what works for you if you're working with an agency they might have requirements for what it is that you have to do um, and so like let's say if you only wanted to make a video but their agency you know makes everybody make a book like you're gonna have to do that then to you know work with that agency um, and maybe they'll still allow you to make a video but that's gonna be an extra thing that you kind of do on your own so it's gonna depend um, if you're working with an adoption professional they'll kind of let you know maybe you know from their line of work and, and their experience what works best with the expectant parents that they deal with on a regular basis maybe they'll let you know that books were amazing five years ago but now every expectant mom that they speak with wants to see you know a four minute video you know so it's Talk to your adoption professional and figure out what is going to make the most sense um, for your situation. So for us, we actually did not make an adoption book. We had a web page that was hosted by our adoption agency and we made a video which was also put together by our adoption agency. So we paid our agency a fee and you give them the materials, they send somebody out to your house to film and they do everything. They edit and put it all together and it all is encompassed in that one fee that you pay them. Now, if you work with an adoption professional that doesn't provide that service, then you're going to have to go out on your own and figure out how to create your profile. Luckily, there are a lot of resources online. Websites like Adoptimist or Adoptions.com are places that you can put up your adoption web page. OurChosenChild.com does everything from books to web pages and websites to videos. And then LoveMatters.com puts together just really beautiful adoption books. I saw some of their work online. I've never seen it firsthand, so I can't totally attest to it. I would just say anytime that you're going to work with a company that markets themselves to um, hopeful adoptive 
parents, just do your due diligence and do your research. Um, just like working with an agency and everything else, you just want to make sure that everything you touch within your adoption journey is ethical and you're working with companies that are ethical. So I've kind of broken up the rest of the information based on the medium. For me, the way you tell your story, um, in your book and your website or your web page is going to be very very similar it's really the same storytelling um the same kind of things you want to include it's just two different ways to consume that content um and video is is pretty different actually so i broke those up so that we can kind of go through them and talk about the differences but before i get into all of that information i really want to start off by saying the most important thing when putting your profile together, like the number one thing you need to remember is to be authentically yourself. You have to have to be. I just feel like I looked at so many different profiles when we started out on our journey to kind of see like what other people are doing. Um, and I feel like I saw so many profiles that just seemed so contrived and they kind of seemed like the same profile over and over again just with different pictures because it obviously was different people and I got the sense that there are a lot of profiles that people put together and they put in there what they think expectant mothers and, and families want to hear and not enough about who they actually are and what their life is actually like um, and so I want to caution you to not do that, to be yourself. Don't put down just what you think people want to hear. And that's the thing, expectant moms, expectant parents are going to read your profile and they're going to connect with something and you want them to genuinely connect with the real authentic version of yourself. Um, that's obviously gonna be the best foundation for building a relationship going forward. And so don't fake it, don't put what you think somebody wants to hear because again, you're gonna attract the wrong people. I'm gonna start off with like books slash web pages and websites. So when it comes to adoption profile books, um, your agency or adoption professional might have specifications that you have to follow as far as like how long your book has to be or how many paragraphs or words you have to include per kind of like, topic um i think the average adoption book is eight pages i think that's what i looked at at one point in time but i have also seen like some sample books online that are as long as 16 pages um i think that's probably a little too long um in the grand scheme of things because expectant parents are looking through quite a few profiles when it comes to creating a web page or a website i would just recommend doing maybe like three short paragraphs like per topic um or two maybe a little bit longer ones again you don't want to overdo it you don't want to write so much that it becomes a hassle for somebody to read again but you you do want it to say everything it needs to say right so just try to be kind of clear and concise and keep your paragraphs short um, and to the point um, but exciting <laughs> I know it's a big job putting together a profile first thing to remember is that you are storytelling here this is not a made-up story this is a real-life story your real-life story and so it should be super easy to write right easier said than done I know a lot of people myself included have a really hard time talking about themselves like if you bring me to one of those icebreaker things and you're like tell us who you are and what you love to do on the weekends I'm like I, I don't know I don't know like I always freeze when it comes to that kind of stuff and so it's very difficult for me to talk about me um and so I was a little bit worried about how I was going to present um, our life in our profile. Um, you want it to be interesting, but you also want it to be real. You don't want it to be made up. You don't want to be like, oh, you know, we we enjoy, you know, parasailing and you've literally never been parasailing. Like it should be all the things that you love to do um, and it should include your zest for life and, and your excitement for the journey that you're on. First things first, this is pretty obvious, but you need to start off by telling the story of you how you and your significant other came to be, what is your love story, where did you meet, how long did you date, what was your proposal like, um, how was the wedding, and how long have you been married? All things that are kind of gonna set the scene for how you got to the place that you're in right now. It's also very important to talk about family life. Do you have any children? If so, 
who are your children? How old are your children? What kind of activities do you like to do with, with your children that this expected mother or parent can envision, you know, their child doing with your family? Talk about your extended family, your mother and your father and your in-laws. And, you know, if you have nieces and nephews, um, what do you guys like to do together? Do you ever take family vacations? Give a snapshot of what that extended family situation is gonna look like. Oh, also totally forgotten, I don't know how. Do you have pets? Those are family. Talk about your pets. It's funny because one of the expectant moms that we were matched with in our journey was so excited over the fact that we had three dogs. <laughs> she was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be awesome. He's gonna get to play with all of the dogs. That was a big selling point for lack of a better way to put that. Um, for that mom, she was excited. Touch upon religion, you and your partner practice the same religion if not talk about how you know you guys believe and and value diversity um within your household um and how you celebrate each other's different you know religious holidays and and things like that talk about the role that religion plays in your life if you're very religious and you know that you know you want your child to go to you know religious classes and and you're gonna go to you know your place of worship every week and all the things let that expected mom know that that is the way that their child is going to be raised. And if religion isn't a factor in your family, touch upon that too. Doesn't matter to every expected mom or, or parent, but it's going to matter to a few. Then you wanna talk about your lifestyle and things that you really, really love to do and that you're kind of passionate about. You know, you know, where do you like to vacation? What do you like to do on the weekends? What are your favorite activities to do um, as a couple or even separately, you know? if. Mom likes to play guitar and dad is a star basketball player. Talk about those things and talk about how you kind of bring them together and support each other in your household. If you're into traveling, include, you know, what your favorite trips were, the most recent trip that you took. Because we're storytelling and we're really painting a picture here for expectant families about what they can expect their child's life to look like with you, you want to include details about your home. You know, what style home is it? Is it a craftsman? Is it a ranch? Is it a tutor? A cape? Um, talk about the charm of the house and and the way you you love to decorate for the holidays um you know talk about the neighborhood do you live near parks lakes um how is the school district like these are all things that are going to give people a really good idea about what their child's life could look like and lastly talk about adoption talk about what brought you to adoption why this is the path that you've chosen what your hopes are for this adoption the kind of contact you plan to keep and if you are open to pursuing a transracial adoption i think especially now more than ever it's really important for you to talk about diversity what that means to you how you plan to provide your child a diverse environment um, and how you plan to celebrate that child's culture. Now, storytelling is great and it obviously helps paint a picture, but visuals really drive all of that home, right? So photos are going to be just as important as the things that you're saying in your profile. So first things first, make sure the quality of your photographs are good. You don't want any that are too dark that you can't really see well or that are like super fuzzy. You want good, crisp, bright photos where everything is easy to see and pretty. Personally, I'm gonna suggest limiting the amount of photos where you have sunglasses on. Obviously, sunglasses block a large portion of your face. Eyes are a very important part of one's appearance um, and we often connect with people through making eye contact. Um, and so I would recommend not having too many pictures of sunglasses. Our agency actually had a rule about not having alcohol or any alcoholic beverages in any of your pictures and I actually really agree with that. Um, obviously we know that you can be an adult and responsibly enjoy a beverage, but you know, when you take a picture of you at a restaurant and there's like a bunch of them two wine glasses on the table, regardless of whether you had one and there were guests, it, it just kind of maybe doesn't look the greatest. My perception is kind of everything in this situation. Situation. So I just recommend foregoing any pictures where there's alcohol present. I also recommend having a good mixture of like photo styles. So you should have post photos, you should have candid, 
moments. You should have selfies. You should have pictures that people took of you. A really good mix. To me, selfies are kind of spontaneous and fun, um, and they're really great for showing off certain situations. Um, you know, if you're in the middle of a baseball game, like that's really fun. But often it's hard to get a good idea of, you know, a travel photo if it's too up close. So if you can get a picture that somebody took of you in front of a monument somewhere to show travels, like that's probably a better situation. Like I said, post photos are great where you're, you know, maybe all made up, you're going to a wedding or something. Um, but then also candid photos that somebody just snapped of you too, you know, laughing at a party or, you know, hugging. Those photos are really great and super genuine as well. Also, I don't know that this is totally necessary, but I personally think this is really cool. Um, I see a lot of profiles where people look very similar. Like maybe they'll include their wedding picture, but then most of the other photos that they've included are from like the last like two years of their life. Um, share all the photos <laughs> from all the times. So I really like the idea of showcasing photos of you guys as a couple throughout the years. What did you guys look like when you first started dating? You probably look like babies, but that's really cool to include too, especially because you're gonna be touching upon that and your, your kind of love story and what brought you together. Sharing family photos, photos of your pets are really good. If you have nieces, nephews, um, children of you know close friends, I recommend asking if you can use photos of them in your profile. Um, obviously you're trying to paint a picture again and so letting um, an expectant parent see you with children and, and you interacting with children even in a photo is a really positive thing and again I just think it gives an expectant parent you know a good idea of you know what they can expect their child to be doing with you and lastly include photos of you guys doing things that you love so if that's skiing put those skiing photos in there. If that's, you know, family game night, include those fun pictures as well. All right, so let's talk about adoption profile videos now. I think these have gained a lot of popularity in the last few years, and I think rightfully so. Um, while I see the value in having a book or a web page, something to to read. Um, I love videos um, for the same reason that I love <laughs> making videos on YouTube. It's easier to get a sense of who someone is when you're able to watch them and see their personality, hear their voice, see their facial expressions, than it is to kind of get that same feel from writing. My first tip if you're gonna make a video is to really get yourself comfortable with being on camera beforehand if you're somebody who um, is a little bit overwhelmed by that. Everybody is different. I'm super comfortable on camera. I'm and my husband is less comfortable on camera um, he is okay with kind of speaking candidly like when we do vlogs like that's totally fine for him but to sit down and have somebody filming you and you're answering questions and, and you know how important this video is it feels like there's a lot on the line and it's like a lot of pressure and so just you know take some time to get comfortable behind the camera and familiarize yourself with all of the things that you want to say I won't say like rehearse rehearse but just kind of get comfortable with what it is that you want to say. Adoption profile videos shouldn't be super long. You shouldn't have like a 10 minute long video. I would say probably four minutes or under. I think ours was like three minutes and 46 seconds or something like that. Um, and your video is really gonna be a more condensed version of what you would put in um, a written profile. Um, and so you're gonna kind of touch upon everything, but more than you touch upon it in speaking, you're actually going to be showing it. That's what's cool about, about the video. It really does give a visual. Like if you say that you like you know, taking long walks with your dogs on the weekends. Um, maybe you don't so much talk about how you love taking long walks, and maybe the audio is you answering a different question, but the video footage is of you taking really long walks. And so um, they get an idea of what those walks look like as a family and that, that that's part of your routine together. But in your video, you're gonna touch upon a lot of the same topics. You really should still tell the story about how you guys met. You really should still touch upon why adoption and what your plans are and what your hopes are for you know contact in the future again very important especially right now you should be talking about diversity and how you plan on encouraging diversity and providing a diverse experience for your hopeful adoptive child also i think it's really important to get your family and friends involved in your adoption profile video this is a way for you to have them featured in the video for them to talk about who you guys are as a couple um and you know the kind of parents that you would be and this really gives a hopeful adoptive parent a sense of the kind of community that their child would be raised in. It takes a village to raise a child and I really think you should show your village. I think that if you have that village that is a strength of yours and you should absolutely have them be part of the video. As far as like which kind of profile is best, 
I think it really depends. Um, I really love the video because again, like I said, I think it shows off your personality and I think it gives people a much better idea of the kind of people and family that you are. Um, but you know, I can see how a three minute and 46, you know, second video might not fully explain or give you the opportunity to say everything and show everything that you want to show. And so that's where I think having something written helps. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did find this video helpful, please leave it a thumbs up so I know that you guys enjoy this kind of content and that it is benefiting you in some way. You can leave me any questions or comments you have down below. Love to hear from you. And don't forget to subscribe for more content from the Toll Tribe in the future. And I will see you guys in our next video. Bye.